Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable Podcast, Land Geek Nation, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Well, doing well, thanks. Good to see you. We've got your partner in crime, your partner in crime, the Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Great, thank you. I want to apologize to all the Bostonians listening to this for my That's pretty good, though. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I've been working on it. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, Tate House in Sydney. It's good. Happy to be here. Thanks. Good to see you. Last but not least, you know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. LandMoto.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are things down in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida? Right now, Tate, are you happy to be here or are you happy to be there? I was a little confused. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm going to leave that up to the, to the listeners to decide. Okay. But... Okay. All right. Well, Mark, I'm happy to be here, not there. I don't know how to even respond intelligently <laughs> to this. But I Who do, does? I do think we have an intelligent topic, which is... Tate Litchfield, what is our topic today? Our topic is in today's market, which um, we can all agree is pretty exciting. How do you know if you're overpaid? Can you overpay for land, especially when you're buying wholesale, right? At what point do you sit back and say, oh, I'm the one who's paying too much money for this? So that's that's kind of the question. It's come up a lot on you know, office hours, which is uh, our Monday night call that we have for our coaching students. And uh, I just wanted to get the geeky opinion of uh, our experts. Well, I, I mean, to not start with our resident wholesaler, mm-hmm. Mike Zena, would be just a crime, just terrible. <laughs> Zen Master, what do yes, you think? Oh, well, of course, yes, you can definitely overpay. Um, I, you know, first off, I tell people when they look at any wholesale deal, treat it as an accepted offer. So you still have to run your due diligence. The market does shift. I think it's our responsibility to keep track of the areas we're working or we're going to work and make sure that the current market at the time of purchase that we're safe uh, in with whatever that price is. There are people um, that do put wholesale deals out there that I think are very close to retail. So you have to be very careful. Um, The way I judge it, the way I try to set up wholesale deals is I want you to be able to double or nearly double your money cash and make a 300% return. You know, I think if you can structure it that way, um, or if you buy it that way, you're safe, right? So it's, you know, that allows, like, if you buy it 25 cents on the dollar, you could sell it 50 cents on the dollar because somebody who has a buyer's list there doesn't have to play, pay for all the acquisition. They have someone ready to go. Um, it just works out. So um, I don't want to shift topics, but yeah, you can definitely overpay if you're paying uh, so much that you can't you know, you don't really have any margin to sell it cash and, you know, or if you can't make a healthy return on a terms deal. So I think you have to do your own due diligence and your own market analysis at the time of purchase and make sure that, and I tell people that buy, people buy from me, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I, I, I know you. I'm like, no, no, please. That makes me not Don't, please, please. I always say, no, before you do it, do your due diligence. I don't, I don't want... Yes, I'm trustworthy, but I don't want you to buy. I want you to, you should still do your research and make sure it's a good deal. Okay. Let's unpack a little bit of this before we even move any further. Okay. What's our definition of overpaying? I would say in this instance, if you know, you can't, like I said, I want you to be able to double or nearly double your money wholesale. If you pay for $500, you should be able to sell it for close to a thousand with a dock fee, a thousand dollars. Right. But if you're paying 500 and you're going to sell for 700, yeah. It's not, it's not, not very good. Right. I don't like it. I, I, I mean, okay. it's still money, but I don't, I don't like, I want to have a, you know, I'm using that as an example, right? If I, if I buy for 500, but, okay, but, for but you're, you're, the Mike Zeno metric is if you're, if you're buying wholesale, you're not, if you can't double your money, yeah, you can't see definitively based on the current yeah. market. Right. You're not buying it. I, so I, I guess I look at it more, Mike, from, I, I do a lot more of, 
selling than buying in the wholesale market. And I'm, and I really struggle with that pricing to make sure that people can do that. So, cause I want repeat customers. It's not a one, 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 one deal, right? I don't want that. We hear all the time and um, we've heard from other people too, that, you know, from, bought from other people on this call, but we want them to be like, I remember Tate saying was one of them. We had a boot camp, right? Tate. And the guy was like, oh, I don't want to tell Mike what I just made on this deal. And then he's like, what do you mean? Tell him he'll sell you more. Like you want them to make money. So I look at it from the side of selling it, I guess, Mark, more than buying it. So maybe I'm not, maybe I'm a little bit, uh, uh, I don't know what the word, but prejudiced on that side of the things. I'm trying to, I want you to make money. So that's how I define it. I want you to be able to double your money or nearly double your money cash and then make a nice 300% return on, on terms. Okay. Tate, what's your definition of overpaying? You know, it's tricky. Um, I can tell you that, uh, the price that you probably bought at three months ago is not today's price. Um, and that's just because I think there's not as much, you know, there's not as much inventory floating around because people don't feel this anxiety to clean, clean house, right? Like they're not looking at their properties and saying, Oh, this is aging. I've owned this for 60 days. I have to get rid of it. And that's just because we are in a seller's market. If you've got the land, and you're doing good marketing, it should sell. So, you know, when I look at wholesale deals for me, um, I'm not really worried about the price of the property, but what I'm interested in is the capital recovery of that property. I want to know, since I'm a term seller, I only sell on terms primarily. I want to know if I, when I sell this property on terms, how long it'll take for me to recover my investment, which is that cost of acquisition. And I have a parameter of what I like to be in an area, number of months. And as long as the property is within that, that area that I've deemed acceptable, and I deem that number acceptable based on the yield that I need to make for my investors and myself, I'll do the deal, right? So for me, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to the numbers. I'm not really getting overly analytical about the low comps or the high comps or the outliers or anything like that. What matters to me is how long will it take me to recover my investment? What will be my yield on that? I run a couple different scenarios. I want to know best case scenario, it sells for 250. Worst case scenario, we have to let it go for 200. What does that look like? What does that do for me? And when I know that, I'm comfortable. When I buy property, I buy it because I want it. And that's not going to change if it takes me 60 days or six months to sell it. I still want it. I still believe in that property. And sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right buyer. So can you overpay? Absolutely. I looked at a deal the other day. The guy wants $14,000 for a property that's worth 22. That's not a good buy for me. Right? It doesn't make sense. Okay. But I'm also, you know, I, I bought some property the other day. The going rate on these is around... 2,500 and I bought six at 2,800. I overpaid by $300, but did I? I mean, for me, no. Well, certainly not in this market you didn't, not in an inflationary market. I mean, think about the properties you bought a year ago. They're right. on terms. And let, let's just say you have a 10% default rate. Well, now you're, <laughs> you're making your great. Though you right. love those defaults. Now yeah. you've got a, a whole new pricing structure and your cost basis has gone down, increasing your yield, increasing your ROI. Um, dude, buddy, Netcap OG, what are your thoughts on this? It's your turn to talk anyways. Well, I agree with Mike and Tate. I mean, I, I, when I look at a wholesale deal, I really would like to be able to double my money cash. Now in this market, there's a little wiggle room there, right? Like um, land is an efficient is an efficient mar inefficient market. And um, uh, I can maybe push the, the price up on the sales side a little bit in this market. You gotta remember too, when you're buying property wholesale, um, you are saving costs on mailing. Uh, I just bought a wholesale property last week. It had beautiful pictures. Like somebody probably charged this guy $150 to take these pictures. Uh, he had a due diligence report and I got this property at what I would definitely consider 50 cents on the dollar or less even. Uh, so it was a great buy for me. And I didn't have to, you know, I don't have other costs associated with acquiring some of these properties sometimes, but that's, that's what I look at and on a terms deal. I agree with Tate as well. You got to play with the numbers a little bit. You got to say, okay, if I'm buying this for 3000 uh, and I'm going to sell it on terms, 
how quickly can I get my money out and what's the yield look like? And am I comfortable with that? You know, ideally 10 months or less is what we want, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to go up to 12 months, even 18 months sometimes if the numbers look decent. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're so spoiled, aren't we? Because like yeah. we're talking about overpaying. Well, we're still making money. What other, I mean, I can't think of any other thing. Like, you can overpay on a stock and lose money. Right. I, I'd love to know, like, has anyone ever lost money? What's the last time you lost money on a land deal? Tate? I got one that we're, uh, we're not going to lose money, but it's not going to be a, pay, a huge payday, right? Uh, right and that's like, because- You lost money. Like you lost a hundred dollars, 50 bucks, a thousand dollars. Like it's just, uh, it was just a bad, like you overpaid, it was a bad deal. I don't track that, Mark. I track the properties where I don't make a huge return because like, I don't, I don't know, even my worst ones, I've been able to make something on it. Right. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What's the last time you lost money on a deal? Zen master, you, you're thinking about it. Great question. A great point. I'm sorry. And the answer to not that question is no, I have never lost money on a property. So you're just basically recalibrating our expectations. It's like, even if you have a bad purchase, you still can make money. It's just how much money did you make? I have not lost money. Scott Bossman, dude, buddy, Nia Cap OG. Uh, I have not lost. I've lost money on a deal because of a clerical error. Um, I was out a couple hundred bucks, but otherwise, no. I mean, we're talking, this isn't like we've done a few deals. This is hundreds and thousands of deals. Wait till we get to Scott Todd. Scott Todd, what do you have to say about this topic? Never lost money. That's Came crazy. close. Never Came lost close. money. We're talking thousands of deals. Right. Yeah. Not a factor. But see, I Mark, almost, the thing, I almost the thing lost is, money on a deal, actually. Just sidebar. Um, it had uh, it had back taxes, so we let it go for the taxes, and we made like sixteen grand on the overage when it went to auction. Right. It was crazy. I mean, Mark, here's the here's the thing too that a lot of people don't realize is a couple of things. People people that have been doing this for a little while who have been who are accustomed to buying it at the old price, then then they go and they see the reality and they get sticker shocked. So it's no different than you you go to the gas station. You haven't been to the gas station in a while. Like, I mean, I went to the gas station today and um, for the first time in forever, I saw that the highest, you know, octane gas was 408 a gallon. I can't remember the last time it was 408. It's sticker shock. Whoa, right? So you go to the gas station and you could easily say, well, I remember when, I remember when, yeah, you remember when, and that's yesterday. It's not today. To Tate's point, the market, the market changes, the market goes up. And I think that it's, it's a constant thing to say, and this goes back to what we teach in flight school too, the pricing matrix, right? Just because you sold properties for X dollars yesterday, or even if you sold one today, it doesn't mean that your price is right. You have to keep looking at the market. The market is changing out there. You might have your price here and you can say, well, I just sold a property for, for $16,000. Well, that was yesterday's price, honestly. Like today, you know, the entire market might rise. And so if you're not dialed into the market, you could easily look at that and say, I'm overpaying. Or it's also a self-doubt. Because you don't think that you're going to sell it for the eighteen thousand, the new price, and so then you walk. You think everybody else is crazy. Meanwhile, everybody else is making money, and you're walking and going to another county. I've seen that happen too. It's like, oh, well, I can't get it for what I used to get it, so I'm going to go to somewhere else. Yeah, but if you have all your buyers in this one county, why? Like, just raise the price. They're not going to go anywhere else. It's that's the price. That's the price of land. And I think that that's part of the problem. The other the other thing too to remember is that about 15% of the notes will not go to term. 15% on average of the notes will not go to term. Therefore, you're going to resell this property. And you know maybe not all your properties, but there is a portion of those that you will resell. 
So I think that you have to kind of factor that into it. Like, yeah, I might resell it. I might not. But as long as you can at least double your money and you believe you can do it, and if other people are doing it, you can do it too, then I don't see the problem. I don't think that the price is driven by what you sold it for yesterday or it's too expensive. It's based on what the market will will pay you. Yeah, I mean, that's the crazy thing about this model, this business is that it is an inefficient market. So nobody really knows the price. It's funny. I, uh, I was uh, late to the podcast today because a, a customer called me and uh, he's been paying on a note for four and a half years. And he called me. You know, we check in every every so often. And he said, hey, look, um, that area where I bought this property. I said, yeah. He goes, I, I want to get another one. Um, I said, no problem. Yeah, I've got options for you. He said, OK, cool. Uh, what is the going rate on them? And so I pulled up his note, I pulled it up in GeekPay and I was looking at he bought the property originally for $175 a month, right? That was what he was paying us. And he has been paying us. He said, look, I've got another property. It's the same area, same size, same everything. He's like, okay, cool. Um, any way you could cut me a little bit of a discount? And I go, for you? Yeah, we'll take care of you. The new monthly payment on this property is going to be $269 a month. And he looked at me and was like, wait, what? I go, look, man. The market's changed four years ago. You should have bought two of these. And he's like, ah, you think we could do it at 250? And I'm like, yeah, let me, let me get back to you. I got to get on a podcast with Mark. And uh, apparently that's more important than making a sale real quick. So I got to call the guy back, but he was kind of shocked. The property had appreciated by 30% in four years. And, you know, he looked at me and was like, well, if that's what they cost, that's what they cost. I go, yeah. And in three years, you're going to call me and wish you had bought two more of them. Because the price of land is really going one direction, right? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I, I, to Scott Todd's point about you know gas prices, I remember being a kid. And my grandfather, I'd work summers with my grandfather and my dad at this wholesale grocery store. They, they all worked together. And I'd go in the truck and I'd make deliveries. And my grandfather would give me five bucks. And he'd be like, go, you know, bring me back some lunch at McDonald's. I want a you know, quarter pounder and uh, fries and a Coke. Well, you know, I'm losing money on this deal. And I didn't have the heart to tell him, like, Grandpa, uh, I got to pull out money in my own pocket, you know, on this, on this thing. It's like, you know, he just, he didn't stay up with the pricing, but, you know, because McDonald's would keep raising their prices every year. So um, I don't know why I told that story. Because the price is going up. But, because the prices are going up. And you can either get in, get on board with that or get left behind. That's you got you got two options. You can pivot or you get left behind. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um Scott, Todd, do you want the final word on this? No, I think we think, think we killed it. I think we killed it. Well, I want to thank the listeners and um remind them that the only way that we're gonna get Scott Todd to do the tip of the week this week is if you do us three favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. He's never lost money on a deal. He's going to teach you exactly how to do that. And that flight school tuition ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make back that money 180 days or less. Just follow the recipe, show us your work, schedule a call, learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week. A website, we had a resource, a book, something else actionable. Oh, we had this conversation last week. I gave three. Should have given two. All right, fine. Should I get should I get the tip of the week or you you do it, man? You do it. Me? Yeah, you I, I, I don't no, I don't do tips. <laughs> All right, nobody does around that. here. Nobody no. comes prepared Let for the, the host do it. Let the host do it. Look how look how Mike and, and Scott have their their the thing on mute like 
Talk, talk about it's being respectful, Mark. That's how you listen. Huh. Bailing out of it. Just do listening. You a, do you guys have a tip of the week? I like the Blinkist app. The Blinkist. <laughs> okay, that's a good. It's tip. actually pretty awesome. It, 2017 you know what? called yeah, the tips back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got, I got Come I got on. <laughs> It's really I awesome got- because these people, they write these books and you don't have to, it's so much fluff. Just get to the point. Blinkist. I got it's still one. relevant. All right. Scott's got a good For, tip. Forget boxer, go to Bali. All right. Really? Go. I, uh, you know, it's the new, it's the new, the, the, the new vo- uh, boxer. Really? All right. Let's just check this out because I'm, I'm tired of hearing about Bali. Bali. Volley.com. Well, how is it going to make my life better? Yeah. How- Inspire prospects with personalized outreach. We help B2B companies talk to their prospects by scaling personalized hyper-relevant outreach. Is this it? B-O-L-L-E-Y? Yeah. Supercharge your funnel with Volley BDRs, research and intent data. Video no. messaging? Video messaging. Volley messaging. video messaging. It's volleyapp.com. Volleyapp.com. You think okay. your team yeah. wants you to see them? Like if they're in the pajamas or whatever they're doing, I don't know. It's boxer yeah. with video. Uh, I'm not in. I'm out. I'm out. Uh, why, I don't always why, comb my why, hair, Scott. I don't know. Now I have to boxer be on Boxer has video? You can, do, you can do video on Boxer? Garbage. Garbage. You can also use something called FaceTime. Yeah. Garbage. Garbage. I'm usually not very right. comfortable with my hairstyle. I don't want the team to see me like all disheveled. And yeah. like, we're not listening to him. <laughs> okay, Scott. So honestly, though, like, wh- why is this awesome for teams? Well, because vo- voice is one level. Eye to eye contact is another level. Think about that. Eye to eye contact is a whole different level than voice. So when you can see someone's face and you can see how they, their reaction to things, or you can see how they're delivering the message, it's a much better communication style than just listening to somebody talk because you can't hear or see, you can't, you can hear, but you can't see. So now you get to see, now you get the entire experience with somebody as opposed to, Hey, uh, yeah. What about this? What about that? They can show. I know you don't really love Vox or ha- we, you've talked about that before. So if we got volley, I can volley you all the time. That's okay. No, I'm still not doing it. <laughs> Listen, you guys need a tip. I gave you a tip. What do you want? <laughs> uh, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm going in now. I'm signing up. I, I'm not going to sign is, up. Is, is everyone going to do this? No, no I'm not going to no, do it. No. And the reason I'm not going to do it is. I want to do it to volley Scott. Yeah, if Scott does it, I'll do it. Listen, maybe I should be on volley and then like kill Boxer because I hate that. Dee, 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 dee sound <laughs> what does volley do? Makes garbage. So we're you know, sound is, the thing. The thing that's interesting about cell phones, Scott, is you have the ability to turn the volume off. <laughs> I'm not sure no, if no, you no. know that. I mean, you, you know, can't. yes, I can turn the volume, but you know what you can't do? You can't change that that stupid tone on Voxer, so I shut it off completely. Now people send me messages and it shows up as a notification, but I might have my phone here and be working back there and not know that anybody sent me a message for hours. Because And then I just text your airplane everything. phone number and then I just text you directly. It's all right here, man. Yeah, see? What a volume. You might as well just use Signal at this point, right? At least that's encrypted. Not yeah, Signal is a great app. Really? It's encrypted. It's privacy. Yeah. I don't know if you. this is good for teams. Okay. I, it says something went wrong. Please check your connection and try again. What's the pricing? I can't, I can't even register for this thing. Mm. Oh, it's free. All right. Mm. You know what Mark says about free apps? Yeah. <laughs> what is know. asynchronous versus synchronous? Like, what does that mean? So asynchronous means that you know, I can volley you and, and send you like a, a, a video message. And then when you receive it two hours later, you can respond oh. as opposed to synchronous is a phone call. And unless you're available, we, we can't, we're, we're not synced up. I don't know. I feel like I'd be using that, thinking I'm using Voxer, not really paying attention to what I'm wearing. And then it would be really embarrassing. 
I don't know. Out. I think we should try it. I'll try it. Be fine. I want to volley Scott. I want to see what noise it makes on his phone. All right. So are we all agreed we're all going to be volley volleyers now instead of voxers? I'm not. No. Well, no. You guys are tip of the week. <laughs> I told you I needed a tip. You asked me for a tip. I gave you one. I mean, I'm, I'm not standing here telling you you got to go do it. It's a tip. Maybe you want to talk to your team. Maybe you don't. Maybe I'll join it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Huh. Here's my tip of the week. Register for boot camp. Go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp. <laughs> coming up in April. All right. Focused. Great, great podcast, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mark. We, we ready to do this? One, two, three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Never gets old. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.